Hi, I'm Julie Weber of Liberate Ministries, and today's topic is called Forgiveness One. This is video one of a two-part video series on forgiveness. All information is quoted from my Lady Liberty workbook on pages 89 through 93. Forgiveness is pretty important and it is one of the keys to healing. I've waited until now to talk about it because all the prior video teachings prepare you to be ready to forgive. You may not have been ready without reawakening both your mind and your spirit to the issues and the circumstances and the people active in your life at the time you aborted. Now is the time to trust God and forgive. Forgiveness is a quality whereby one ceases to feel resentment against another for the wrong he or she has committed against oneself or gives up any claim for a debt owed by another. For example, one forgives another or forgives a debt. It may be granted with or without the other asking for forgiveness. It is recognized in Christianity as a spiritual gift. Spiritual forgiveness does not necessarily have any connection with material or financial forgiveness. One may spiritually forgive another, yet expect that the other should still make material or financial amends for any wrongs that have been done. God is understood to be infinitely forgiving at the cost of his Son, and indeed the source of all forgiveness. Forgiveness is a necessary component of civilization. Without it all, all wrongs would demand revenge, which may themselves be taken as wrongs requiring revenge, a resulting in a spiraling escalation of retaliation, leading ultimately to utter destruction. Well, what does the Bible say about forgiveness? Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus was blameless and he paid the price by dying on the cross for our sins. The only reason that all of mankind can be made right through the forgiveness of sins is because of what Jesus did on the cross. His blood was shed for us. God is always ready and willing to forgive us and quickly. Psalm 86.5 says, For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive our trespasses, sending them away, letting them go completely and forever. And you are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all those who call upon you. We are not supposed to hold grudges. Leviticus 19.18 don't seek revenge or carry a grudge against any of your people. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am God. In other words, loving others, even when they are cruel to us, is the same as forgiving others, even when they are cruel to us. Let's look at the, <clears throat> at the parable of the unmerciful servant. The way we forgive others is the way your Heavenly Father will forgive you. So let's read the following parable of the unmerciful servant. And that's in Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. So as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, 
he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay back the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me too. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Can a post-abortive woman forgive and forget? Forgive, sure, but forget? Hmm, I don't think so. God's response to this. Hebrews is Hebrews 10:17. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. That's what's so amazing about God. In the above verse, we see that God is able to fully forgive and forget. Forgiveness is not easy, but as people, we can choose to forgive. As you know, forgetting even the smallest offense can be difficult. Wait. <clears throat> we will never forget our abortion experiences, and that is okay. We don't need to forget. We are learning how to be fully forgiven for the events surrounding our abortion experiences. People can think that we have forgotten something when we are silent and don't bring up the topic. That isn't always the case. Strong feelings can remain below the surface of our silence. Okay, the post-abortive woman needs to forgive the abortionist, doctors, nurses, and counselors, the abortion clinics, the doctor's offices, any location where you had your abortions, the media, the government, our culture, friends who encouraged you, parents who failed you, father of the child, others who have hurt you by force or silence or neglect. The post-abortive woman needs to ask for and receive forgiveness from God for taking the life of her child. For sinful thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that stem from the abortion experience for herself. From the child she aborted, from others she might have hurt during her years before any post-abortion recovery. A post-abortive woman will need to forgive people in her future, people who judge her or condemn her, individuals who attack her for speaking out about her past and her desire to see healing for others who made the same choice. Individuals who insist that what happened to her would never happen to them. Asking for forgiveness. How does a post-abortive woman receive forgiveness? Like anyone else, by asking. John 14, 14. Huh? You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. The post-abortive woman will not want to ask for forgiveness. Feelings of unworthiness make it a struggle to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a choice, an act of your will. So when you choose to forgive, you are not trying to forget the situation. You are making a choice of your will by choosing to forgive. The feelings of forgiveness may not be there right away. By choosing to forgive, your behavior begins to line up with what the Bible says about forgiveness. 
our <clears throat> natural tendency is to forgive the person or the situation when we feel like it. Or some people just want the feelings to be there first in order to extend any kind of forgiveness. So by choosing to forgive, you become obedient to God's word, whether you feel like it or not. With time, walking in forgiveness creates the feelings that follow. Because you have been extending grace to them, your heart will no longer be hardened and you will have good feelings in your heart about the person or the situation. When a new offense comes or something bubbles up to the surface that causes you to have unforgiveness in your heart again, you need to repeat the cycle of forgiveness as often as necessary to keep your heart free of unforgiveness. Those who forgive much will receive much joy. Luke 7, 47. <clears throat> Jesus said of the woman who anointed his feet with oil, Therefore I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven her because she has loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And I leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Live nice, liberated.